The Snowy Mountain Scheme or Snowy Scheme is a hydroelectricity and irrigation complex in southeast Australia. The scheme consists of 16 major dams, 7 power stations, 1 pumping station, and 225 kilometers (140 miles) of tunnels, pipelines, and aqueducts that were constructed between 1949 and 1974. The scheme was completed under the supervision of Chief Engineer, Sir William Hudson and is the largest engineering project undertaken in Australia. The water of the Snowy River and some of its tributaries, much of which formerly flowed southeast onto the river flats of East Gippsland, and into Bass Strait of the Tasman Sea, is captured at high elevations and diverted inland to the Murray and Murrumbidgee Rivers irrigation areas, through two major tunnel systems driven through the Continental Divide of the Snowy Mountains, known in Australia as the Great Dividing Range. The water falls 800 metres 2, feet and travels through large hydroelectric power stations which generate peak load power for the Australian Capital Territory, New South Wales and Victoria. The scheme also provides some security of water flows to the Murray-Darling Basin, providing approximately 2100 gigalitres, 7.4 times 1010 cubic feet of water a year to the basin for use in Australia's irrigated agriculture industry. In 2016, the Snowy Mountains scheme was added to the Australian National Heritage List. Topic History Topic Background Since the eighteen thirties, both the Murray and Murrumbidgee rivers have been subject to development and control to meet water supply and irrigation needs. By contrast, the Snowy River, that rises in the Australian Alps and flows through mountainous and practically uninhabited country until debouching onto the river flats of East Gippsland, had never been controlled in any way, either for the production of power or for irrigation, and a great proportion of its waters flowed into the sea. The Snowy River has the highest source of any in Australia and draws away a large proportion of the waters from the southeastern New South Wales snowfields, and was considered a means of supplementing the flow of the Great Inland Rivers, a means for developing hydroelectric power, also a source of increasing agricultural production in the Murray and Murrumbidgee Valleys. Following World War II, the Government of New South Wales proposed that the flow of the Snowy River be diverted into the Murrumbidgee Bidji River for irrigation and agricultural purposes, however there was little emphasis placed on the generation of power. A counter-proposal by the Government of Victoria involved a greater generation of power, and involved diversion of the Snowy River to the Murray River. Additionally, the Government of South Australia was concerned that downstream flows on the Murray River would be severely jeopardised. The Commonwealth Government, looking at the national implications of the two proposals, initiated a meeting to discuss the use of the waters of the Snowy River, and a committee was set up in 1946 to examine the question on the broadest possible basis. This committee, in a report submitted in November 1948, suggested consideration of a far greater scheme than any previously put forward. It involved not only the simple question of use of the waters of the Snowy River, but consideration of the possible diversion of a number of rivers in the area, tributaries, not only of the Snowy, but of the Murray and Murrumbidgee. The recommendations of the committee were generally agreed to by a conference of ministers representing the Commonwealth, New South Wales, and Victoria, and it was also agreed that the committee should continue its investigations. However, limitations in the Australian Constitution meant that the Commonwealth government was limited in the powers it could exercise, without the agreement of the states. Subsequently, the Commonwealth Government introduced legislation into the Federal Parliament under its defence power, and enacted the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Power Act 1949-100, that enabled the formation of the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority. 
Ten years later, the relevant states and territories introduced their own corresponding legislation and in January 1959 the Snowy Mountains Agreement was reached between the Commonwealth and the states. The legislation created the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority that was given responsibility for the final evaluation, design and construction of the Snowy Mountains Scheme. The final agreed plan was to divert the waters of the Snowy Mountains region to provide increased electricity generating capacity and to provide irrigation water for the dry west. It was greeted with enthusiasm by the people of Australia and was seen to be a milestone towards full national development. The chief engineer, New Zealand-born William Hudson 1955, was chosen to head the scheme as chairman of the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority, and was instructed to seek workers from overseas. Hudson's employment of workers from 32, mostly European, countries, many of whom had been at war with each other only a few years earlier, had a significant effect on the cultural mix of Australia. Construction Construction of the Snowy Scheme was managed by the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority. It officially began on 17 October 1949 and took 25 years, officially completed in 1974. An agreement between the United States Bureau of Reclamation and Snowy Mountains Hydro to provide technical assistance and training of engineers was agreed between the USA and Australia in Washington, D.C. on 16 November 1951. A loan for $100 million was obtained from the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development in 1962. Tunneling records were set in the construction of the scheme and it was completed on time and on budget in 1974, at a cost of $820 million Australian dollars, a dollar value equivalent in 1999 and 2004 to $6 billion Australian dollars. Around two-thirds of the workforce employed in the construction of the scheme were immigrant workers, originating from over 30 countries. The official death toll of workers on the scheme stands at 121 people. Some 1,600 kilometers (990 miles) of roads and tracks were constructed. Seven townships and over 100 camps were built to enable construction of the 16 major dams, seven hydroelectric power stations, two pumping stations, 145 kilometers (90 miles) of tunnel, and 80 kilometers (50 miles) of pipelines and aqueducts. Just 2% of the construction work is visible from above ground. Two of the towns constructed for the scheme are now permanent Cabramara, the highest town in Australia, and Kankoban. Kuma flourished during construction of the scheme and remains the headquarters of the operating company of the scheme. Townships at Adaminabi, Jindabyne and Talbingo were inundated by the flooded waters from Lake Eucumbine, Lake Jindabyne and Junama Reservoir. Improved vehicular access to the high country enabled ski resort villages to be constructed at Threadbo and Guthega in the 1950s by former snowy scheme workers who realised the potential for expansion of the Australian ski industry. The scheme is in an area of 5,124 square kilometres, 1,978 square miles, almost entirely within the Kosciuszko National Park. The design of the scheme was modelled on the Tennessee Valley Authority. Over 100,000 people from over 30 countries were employed during its construction, providing employment for many recently arrived immigrants, and was important in Australia's post-war economic and social development. 70% of all the workers were migrants. During construction of the tunnels, a number of railways were employed to convey spoil from worksites and to deliver personnel, concrete and equipment throughout. The project used Australia's first transistorised computer, one of the first in the world. 
Called Snokum, the computer was used from 1960 to 1967. At the completion of the project, the Australian government maintained much of the diverse workforce and established the Snowy Mountains Engineering Corporation, SMEC, which is now an international engineering consultancy company. The scheme is the largest renewable energy generator in mainland Australia and plays an important role in the operation of the national electricity market, generating approximately 67% of all renewable energy in the mainland national electricity market. The Snowy Scheme's primary function is as a water manager, however under the corporatized model must deliver dollar dividends to the three shareholder governments, the NSW, Commonwealth and Victorian governments. The scheme also has a significant role in providing security of water flows to the Murray-Darling Basin. The scheme provides approximately 2,100 gigalitres 7 four times 1,010 cubic feet of water a year to the basin, providing additional water for an irrigated agriculture industry worth about 3 billion Australian dollars per annum, representing more than 40% of the gross value of the nation's agricultural production. The Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme, is one of the most complex integrated water and hydroelectric power schemes in the world and is listed as a world-class civil engineering project," by the American Society of Civil Engineers. The scheme interlocks seven power stations and 16 major dams through 145 kilometers 90 miles of Trans Mountain Tunnels and 80 kilometers 50 miles of aqueducts. The history of the Snowy Scheme reveals its important role in building post-World War II Australia. Sir William Hudson was appointed the first commissioner of the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority, serving between 1949 and 1967. The commissioner's role was the overall management of the scheme. He represented the scheme at the highest levels of government, welcomed international scientists and engineers, encouraged scientific and engineering research, as well as attending many social and civic activities. Sir William's management style stressed cooperation between management and labor and scientific knowledge facts over opinion. The scheme was completed with the official opening of the Tumut 3 power station project by the Governor General of Australia, Sir Paul Hasluck, on 21 October 1972. 1958 elevator accident On 16 April 1958, an elevator at a dam near Cabramara fell about 400 feet when the cable broke, killing four Italian employees of a French construction firm. Topic Personal stories and memoirs of work on the Snowy Scheme Various stories and memoirs have been written about work on the Snowy Mountains Scheme. Siobhan McHugh's Social History, The Snowy, The People Behind the Power Hyman 1989, Harper Collins 1995 is the most prominent, having been awarded the NSW Premier's Literary Award for Nonfiction and being the source of an ABC radio documentary series 1987 and a film Australia documentary Snowy, A Dream of Growing Up, 1989 https org slash the dash snowy slash dot her book is based on about 90 oral histories with former snowy workers and residents with original recordings archived as a research collection at the state library of new south wales an updated 70th anniversary edition of her book will be published by new south in 2019 most recently, Snowy Hydro, Woden Community Service, Gen S Stories and PhotoAccess partnered for a digital storytelling project to present a diverse collection of stories told from the point of view of seven ex-workers, two lifelong employees and a child of a snowy worker. As part of the project, participants created a short film about their experience on the Snowy Scheme, each story offering a unique perspective into what life was like building the scheme between 1949 and 1974. 
The project's artistic director Jenny Savigny assisted participants to make the short films, enabling them to put together the scripts, record voiceovers, and edit the short films. In an interview with Andrew Brown, The Canberra Times, Savigny said it was important to create a history of the snowy hydro using the participants' own words. You just get a personal sense of what it was like to be there, and what it meant to people's lives. The films premiered 7 June 2018 at the Palace Electric Cinema in New Acton and can be viewed on the Woden Community Service YouTube channel. Topic. Current operations The scheme is operated by Snowy Hydro Limited, an unlisted public company incorporated pursuant to the Corporations Act, 2001 owned by the governments of New South Wales 58%, Victoria 29%, and Australia 13%. Topic. Environmental concerns The original plan was for 99% of the water of the Snowy River's natural flow to be diverted by the scheme below Lake Jindabyne. Releases from the scheme were based on the needs of only riparian users and took no account of ecosystem needs. It soon became known that the lower reaches of the river were in environmental crisis. An extensive public campaign led to the Snowy Water Inquiry being established in January 1998. The inquiry reported to the New South Wales and Victorian governments in October of that year, recommending an increase to 15% of natural flows. The two governments were equivocal about this target. Aside from economic considerations, there was a view that the health of the Murray is more important than that of the Snowy, and any extra environmental flows are better used there instead. In the 1999 Victorian state election, the seat of Gippsland East was won by Craig Ingram, an independent and member of the Snowy River Alliance, based in large part on his campaign to improve snowy flows. In 2000, Victoria and NSW agreed to a long-term target of 28%, requiring 375 million Australian dollars of investment to offset losses to inland irrigators. In August 2002 flows were increased to 6%, with a target of 21% within 10 years. However, by October 2008 it was evident that the return of environmental flows to the Snowy River in 2009 would be no more than 4% of natural flow with governments arguing the Snowy River needs to pay back the Mowamba borrowings. At the 2010 state election, Ingram lost the seat of Gippsland East to the Nationals. In 2017, it was announced that the 21% target would be reached for the first time. Some concerned water managers, conservationists, politicians, and farmers continue to advocate for the return of environmental flows to the Snowy River. The Snowy River Alliance formed in 1996 to address the lack of environmental flow commemorates Snowy River Day annually, towards the end of August, to mark the 2002 anniversary of when the governments of Victoria, NSW and the Commonwealth first released water into the Snowy River over the Mowumba Weir. The Dalgetty District and Community Association started in response to dirty drinking water for the town of Dalgetty, the loss of fishing and looming closure of the caravan park. A weir was constructed at Dalgetty and the caravan park stayed as a result of their efforts. In accordance with the Snowy Water License, Snowy Hydro Limited has recommissioned the Mowumba Aqueduct. Seasonal variable flows are essential to river ecology including flushing flows to support vital ecosystems for the Australian platypus and native Australian base, the species over which Ingram initially fought for flows into the Snowy River. A major spillway upgrade now facilitates these flows. Topic. Components. 
Construction of the scheme began in 1949 and was completed in 1974. Guthega Power Station commenced power production on 21 February 1955. <laughs> power stations The total installed capacity is 3.772 gigawatts, 5,058,000 horsepower. Topic: Major dams and reservoirs. The scheme's largest dam is Talbingo Dam with an embankment volume of 14,488,000 cubic meters and a wall height of 161.5 meters. Kankoban Dam is the longest dam in the scheme with a crest length of 1,067 meters (3,501 feet). A variety of dam and spillway types were used in the construction. With a capacity of 4,798,400 megaliters, 1,055.5 times 10 to the 9 imp gal, 1,267.6 times 10 to the 9 US gal, Lake Yukumbeen is the largest reservoir in the scheme. At the other end of the scale, Deep Creek Reservoir is the smallest reservoir with just 11 megaliters, 2.4 times 10 to the 6 imp gal, 2.9 times 10 to the 6 US gal. Topic: <laughs> Pumping stations. The Snowy Mountains scheme has two pumping stations. The Jindabyne Pumping Station pumps water from Lake Jindabyne through to the Snowy Jihi Tunnel at Island Bend. The pump storage facility at Tumit 3 Power Station returns water to Talbingo Reservoir. Topic. Expansion plans In March 2017, the Australian government suggested a $2 billion project expanding the 4.1 GW Snowy Mountain Scheme by 2 GW of pump storage for a week, building new tunnels and power stations, but no new dams. The 80% efficiency of such storage can be sufficient in levelling differences between supply and demand. Topic. Tourism The Snowy Scheme is a major tourist destination. Sightseeing driving tours to the key locations of the scheme are popular out of regional centers like Kuma, Adaminabi and Jindabyne along roads built for the scheme like the Snowy Mountains Highway and Alpine Way and towards sites like Cabramara, as Australia's highest town, spectacular dam walls, and scenic lakes. Trout fishing is popular in the lakes of the scheme, notably Lake Jindabyne and Lake Yukumbeen. The Snowy Scheme Museum opened at Adaminabi in 2011 to profile the history of the scheme, though skiing in Australia began in the northern Snowy Mountains in the 1860s. It was the construction of the vast Snowy Scheme from 1949, with its improvements to infrastructure and influx of experienced European skiers among the workers on the scheme, that really opened up the mountains for the large scale development of a ski industry, and led to the establishment of Redbow and Perisher as leading Australian resorts. The construction of Guthega Dam brought skiers to the isolated Guthega district and a rope tow was installed there in 1957. Charles Anton, a snowy worker identified the potential of the Threadbow Valley. Topic. See also Economic History of Australia National Electricity Market Kiwa Hydroelectric Scheme